Hey, what's up developers? In this video, you are going to meet Curtis. Curtis has been in the software industry for over 25 years, quarter of a century. He's done interviewing, he's done hiring, he's worked on different teams, and currently he is the vice president of academics over at App Academy. Today we're discussing coding boot camps versus college, and also exploring the differences between software developers, software engineers, and web developers. Also be sure to stay tuned because at the end of this video, I'm going to be sharing with you how you can win a three-month mentorship plan. App Academy is hooking you guys up. App Academy also sponsored this video, so shout out to them for making this all possible. Compared to a college, if someone has this idea to go to college, maybe but maybe boot camp too, what advice would you give to people who are thinking about um, those two options? And what, where do you think college and boot camps maybe get along with each other? What is there a relationship there? Almost every major college or university in the US now sponsors a coding bootcamp. The, the idea that, that these are two separate forms of education, uh, it's just not true anymore. So what you end up having to do is deciding um, as a person, what is it that you wanna be doing in six months? That's really the question. So let's just, let's just pose that as the hypothetical. Do I want to be looking for a job or working in a new job with some skills that I've currently just got um, but I've missed out on, on alternative, uh, just alternative content, right? So when, when you go to a four-year college and you major in something, that's, that's only like 28 hours of the entire 60 hours that you're, you're doing, so, or 120 hours. So at that point, the question is, what are you missing out on? Do you, do you really want to be able to explore? That's another thing about a four-year university is that you don't have to declare a major for the first couple of years. So you can kind of like poke around, see what it is that interests you because uh, irrespective of your age, if you're deciding about going to a school to change your career or to become a, a, you know, a different professional in one way or the other, sometimes you don't know that programming is exactly what you want to do. Right. And if, it's, if you don't know that, then, then think about it. Take the luxury of time if you can and, and go to a four-year university and try out a whole bunch of different things. I didn't know that I wanted to be a math major until I was in my uh, freshman year of university where I took a calculus course for the first time and thought, holy moly, that's beautiful. And uh, at that point, I was like, I was, I, I was, I was so much in love with math. Um, that, that I decided that, that was the thing I was going to do. And I never became a mathematician. Never. I, I just happened to be a programmer, which is kind of like a, you know, a mathematician who forgot all the math that they ever did. Would you consider this true or false? Uh, programming is applied mathematics. Technically speaking, programming is applied mathematics in that it is um, a practical application of what's called automata theory. Um, which is to say that every that you can write proofs for correct programs, and a program is really a transformation. So technically speaking, it's applied mathematics. But I'm going to say, practically speaking, it's learning and speaking a new language. It's learning and writing a new language and thinking in that language. So if by any chance uh, you're a you know, you're a native English speaker and in high school you're, you took French or German and you started learning these words and then this happened to me one day. I was learning German in high school and I was walking along and I looked down and there was this little tin of strawberry candies and in my brain I didn't think strawberry, I thought Erdbeer, which is strawberry in German. And I'm like, wait a minute, I just thought in German. It's the same sort of realization, whether or not you're learning JavaScript, Ruby, Python, C++, Java, C Sharp, any of those, what you're really doing is learning a new language and then figuring out how to express the problem solution in that language. And so it's, it's more like a foreign language course than a mathematics. And so I have to ask your opinion on this too. This is a, a bit of trivia I just want to throw out there. What sure. is the difference between a software engineer a software developer and a web developer. Can I do a Venn diagram? Yes, yes, it? yes. We love Venn okay. diagrams. Uh, let me let me get this. Um, okay, so so you said 
software engineer, software developer, yep. and web developer. Yep. Is that correct? That's correct. A web developer is a special kind of software developer, and they have to speak the languages of the web, of which there are many. So they have to be able to know things. You know, I just realized, can you see that? Hold on. I'm going to write bigger. Okay. So they have to know things like HTML. They have to know things like CSS, because this is how we build user interfaces in on the web for our web browsers. Then you have to know everything. Oh, then, of course, you have to know JavaScript, because JavaScript is the language of the web browser. So now we're up to three languages. Now you need to know some language on the back end. So that's Ruby or Python or C Sharp or Java or anything, really. You just do anything. So, so there's yet another language, so I'll just put a check mark into that. And then you need to have a database of some kind because you need to persist your data. Otherwise, otherwise people are just, you know, like they add a new user and then they never actually get the same. So you have to have a database. So that's a language that's usually SQL and another database thing. So you have to know all of these languages to be a web which is amazing because that's a lot. Mm -hmm. Software developer, on the other hand, is a more generic term. So anybody can be a software developer and program in a variety of languages, but not know all of these. So a software developer is, a web developer is a software developer, but a software developer doesn't necessarily have to be a web developer. So it's like that. So here's their software developer. So maybe they know HTML and CSS and JavaScript and some SQL or whatever, but maybe they know something else too, like um, like a language like Delphi, for example, which is a horrible language to learn, but it's uh, it's very popular for in really old applications. Uh, maybe they know something else. Maybe they know like, maybe they know Salesforce. So they could be a Salesforce developer. They are software developers, but they don't necessarily know all of these languages because they know how to use the Salesforce programming languages to be able to customize. So there's an overlap, but it's not necessarily the same. Sure. Uh, then you have software engineer, which in my opinion, doesn't really exist. Engineers are, are people who apply patterns to be able to come up with known solutions. Software developers have to apply patterns and creatively think to come up with unknown solutions. Hmm. So I don't think that engineers as software development in the software world actually exist. Um, I, I just, I personally, this is me personally speaking. I think that it's a misnomer and a poorly used phrase because again, it's, it's people outside of the craft applying engineer to something when they don't really know we are developers. We develop things. We don't apply things. With the progression of the web, <laughs> do you see the, the software developer and the web developer fusing? Or, you know, for Delphi, do you see that? Do you see everything going to the web? Or do you see in the future a distinct, okay, we have desktop, we have IoT, we have web. Uh, what, what, is, what are your predictions on that? So I really think that, I really think that what we end up with is, um, are, are connected applications, but I think that eventually what we end up with is a um, this amazing peer-to-peer -peer mesh network mm. of devices that aren't necessarily what we call client server. So the majority of the internet works on this client server model, where like if you open up your phone and you open up, you know, uh, Facebook, it's actually talking to Facebook servers, and Facebook servers are speaking back. But those are the same servers that your grandma is looking at while on her you know, computer, because she's also on Facebook and posting pictures of her cat. So there, you know, this is this is clients, these are you know, your grandma's computer and your phone talking to Facebook, There's those centralized servers. Um, eventually what I believe is that um, my phone device and you know and this laptop here eventually they're just going to talk back and forth. And if you happen to live in the Apple ecosystem, they already do this. I can copy text on this and paste it on this, yep. which that's amazing. Imagine being able to do that and just like borrow somebody else's processing power. 
or borrow their internet and you can talk to somebody else. So let's say you're on one end of a cafe and there's somebody else on the other end of the cafe, but they've got a stronger signal to some sort of internet hotspot. You're like, I need to use the internet. You would end up connecting to theirs and that would end up. So I believe that a mesh network is going to end up, um, you already see that in, uh, in products like Synchrony, uh, which is this home mesh or in business office mesh networking sort of stuff. It's really cool. All right, developers, here's what's up. If you want to win a three-month mentorship plan to App Academy Open, here's what you have to do. Number one, be subscribed to this channel. Number two, leave a comment telling me that you're interested in this mentorship plan. And what this does is that it gives you daily access to the App Academy instructors through a Slack channel. They're going to be helping you out to answer technical questions, provide guidance as you go through App Academy Open. I will be randomly selecting a winner, so if you get a YouTube notification, be sure to read it because you may have just won the prize.